Hey what's going on guys welcome back to another video and in this video we are going to build different variations of animated hamburger menu using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Let me show you the demo that we are going to build in this video. Alright guys so this is the hamburger menu that we are going to build in this video so you can see that we have three buttons here and they all button are using the CSS animations so we have a cross button left arrow and right arrow and below we have the hamburger menu so when actually we click on the cross button the hamburger menu will change into a cross button and if we click on the left arrow then the hamburger menu is going to change into a left arrow and similarly if we're going to click on the right arrow the hamburger menu will change into the right arrow so this is what we are going to build and if this sounds interesting then watch the video till the end also make sure you subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one so let's get started Alright guys, so I have some of the HTML boilerplate code ready with me. I'll just give you a quick walkthrough. So this is my HTML file. I am using a Google font. So I have already linked the Google font here. And this is my the CSS file which I'm going to use. And this is the JavaScript file that we will be using for JavaScript. And in the CSS, I have given some of the default CSS which uh, I need to build this. Alright, so the first thing we are going to do is we are going to write the HTML markup. So from here we can see that we have a... Uh, title and then we have three buttons we have a box and then we have a hamburger menu so let's write that so I'm going to use an h2 tag and I'm going to write animated hamburger menu all right and then I'm going to create a div with a class of hamburger underscore styles I'm going to create three buttons so let me have three buttons and the first button will have the cross the second button will have the left arrow right arrow all right and i'm going to give the value here so we will be using this value when we actually write the javascript part so i'm going to give the value as cross i'm just going to copy this paste this Paste this here and I'm going to give L arrow here and this will become R arrow. All right, so now we have the buttons and the last part we need is the we need to have this box. So I'm going to use class of hamburger to the box and inside that I'm just going to make a div which will be our hamburger bars. All right, so I think that's it for the markup we need right now so if we go here and if we see any we see some of the things but we, we need to style that so let's go to the CSS part so in the CSS uh, first we need to have the body so let's give some styling to the body the background of the body is RGBA I'm gonna use 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma 0 point 0.9 as alpha value and after that I need to use a display flex so if you don't know the flex and how the flex model works then I will add the link in the description below you can check out my video on the flex box all right and then I need to have a flex direction of column because all these three are in a column structure so I'm going to use this as column and I need the content to be in the center and I will be having align items as center all right and I need the height to be 100 vertical height all right so now we can see that we are getting it in the center and now let's style this h2 tag so for the h2 I am just going to give some margin bottom so that I can get some space between my buttons and the title and I'm going to give a font size so let me give a font size of 2 rem all right and then for the hamburger styles which are the buttons let's style them for the buttons i'm going to use burger underscore styles and for the hamburger style i just need the have the margin bottom of 20 pixels so that i can get some space between my hamburger box and the buttons and now let's style those buttons so for the buttons i'm going to style so what we want we need a padding of 
2 pixel 10 pixel all right and then we need to have a background color i'm going to use tomato as the color all right and then let's give a border of of one pixel solid and i'm going to use a border of df 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 all right and give a margin so that we get get some spacing between the buttons so for that i'm going to use zero pixel two pixel two pixel and then let's add the cursor pointer as well and let's give the font size to it so i'm going to give font size of one ram all right and let's give a transition a little bit so that when i actually hover it i'm going to give a different color and which is going to give me a little bit of transition effect so i'm going to use is in out yeah that will be good all right so now we have got the buttons and the next thing we will be doing is we need to make some little bit of uh, change in the color when we actually hover the buttons so i'm going to copy this and I'm going to add this and I'm going to give a hover. So if I give a hover, all right. And then for the hover, I just need to change a little bit of background color. So I'm going to be using an RGBA value of 161, 77 and 63. Yeah. So now if you can see that if I hover it, we actually get a background gets changed and that also have a little bit of transition and that is because we actually use this transition property all right so now let's style the hamburger menu so for the hamburger menu first what we are going to do we are going to have the hamburger box so i'm going to give a border of 0.3 ram solid hash df 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 and i will make the width of the box as 200 pixel i will give the same height 200 pixel i'm going to give a display flex because inside the box we are going to have the bars hamburger bars and i want all the hamburger bars in a column structure so that i'm going to do so what i'm going to do i'm going to give a justify content as flex start all right and i need to have an align items as center padding so i'm going to give a padding of 20 pixel all right so now we also have the box the next thing we need is we need to create our hamburger bars i'm going to use the class of hamburger underscore underscore bar and i'm going to give a width of 100 pixel and a height of 0 0.8 ram so I'm doing a mix up of pixel and RAM. So it's, it's up to you. If you want to do everything in a pixel, you can do it. If you want everything in RAM, you can do that as well. So it's up to you. And I'm going to give a background color of white. White. And then the border radius for my bar should be 10 pixel. We're fine. All right. And then let's give a transition because we need to have a little bit of animated effect so i'm going to give transition for all the properties second and then i'm going to do the ease and out all right i know that transition all is not too performant i need to give a specific property which i need to do a transition but for now i mean we, we can skip this part all right now if i save it then you can see that i get the middle bar but i also need the bar above and the bar below so for that i'm going to use the pseudo elements so if you don't know about the pseudo elements i have a video on it i'm going to add a link in the description you can check it out later on so for that what i'm going to do i'm going to use the before and dot hamburger underscore underscore bar after and I'm going to add some common CSS which is required here. So for the common CSS, I will need a content definitely in order to work with the pseudo elements. And then I'm going to use a position absolute. All right, we will be using the same height. So it will be 0.8 rem. The background will be the same. So I'm going to give a background of FFF and then the border radius will be same so that will be a 10 pixel 
and let's give the transition the same transition transition all of 0 0.5 seconds and is and out all right and now let's give the height and width for the specific hamburger so for the before i will need to have a width of 50 pixel all right and i need the before should be at a little bit uh, above the middle line so for that i'm going to use a transform and i'm going to translate the y axis so i'm going to translate the y by 40 pixel all right and now if i save it you can see we get the second bar and now let's do it for the after so we can get the third bar as well so i'm going to do an after here and this will become for 100 and this will be the 40. all right so now we have all the three bars and i did something wrong for the last one i need to have a 150 all right so now we have the uh, the hamburger menu and the next thing we want to do is we want to write some javascript so if we click on the cross button we should get change it to the cross icon if we click on the left arrow it should get changed respectively so let's go to the script file and in the script file what i'm going to do is the first thing we want is we want the reference of all the buttons so i'm going to create a constant of buttons and that is going to do a document dot query selector so i'm going to use query selector all and i'm going to pass the button so this is going to give me all the buttons and i will also take a reference of my hamburger itself so that when i click on the cross i'm going to add a cross class to the hamburger so for that i'm going to have a reference variable as hamburger all right and i'm going to do a document dot query selector and i'm going to select the hamburger the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to loop through all the buttons so i'm going to use a for each loop so buttons dot for each and that is going to give me a button i'm going to be using a arrow function so now we have the button reference so i can add the event listener on the button so the event will be a click event and this click event is going to give me a argument of event and i'm going to take that in an arrow function all right and then i'm going to use a switch case so we have three buttons so i'm going to use a switch case so i'm going to write a switch and this will be e dot target dot value so there are a couple of ways you can do it i am choosing a switch case so it's not limited that you need to do it with a switch case you can do whatever you want so i'm going to have a cross here so if it's a cross then what i'm going to do i'm going to have a hamburger dot class list and then i'm going to toggle the class so i'm going to add a class of cross here so right now we haven't created the cross class but once we are done with our javascript part we are actually going back to the css and we will be writing our cross class l arrow and r arrow so okay so this one is the one case i'll just copy this and i'll add an another case all right so so the next case will be l arrow because we have the l arrow here and the r arrow so for the l arrow i'm going to add a class of l arrow and for the third case i'm not going to add anything a uh, different case because if the it is not a of the two cases then it's going to do a by default it go to the default case so for the default case i'm going to write an r arrow all right so if we want to test that our javascript is working or not i'm just going to write a alert here and click it we get an alert or not so if i click it i'm getting an alert as a cross so that means our javascript is working fine so now we just need to create the particular classes in order to make the transition of our hamburger icon so let's go to the css and the first one we are going to do is for the cross so for the cross if we want to change the hamburger icon into a cross so for that what i'm going to do i'm going to write a hamburger all right and if this hamburger has a cross class as well then we're going to have a hamburger bar and that bar should be having a transform translate so i'm going to translate the x by 50 pixel all right 
and then I want the background to be transparent. All right. Now let's see what happens when we actually click on the cross button. So if I click on the cross button, we can see that the hamburger icon is being translated on an X axis to minus 50 pixel and the background of the middle bar, we are setting it as a transparent. But what we want is we don't want the middle bar, but we want the first and the last bar should form a cross icon. So let's write the CSS for that. So for the before, so for that, what we want the before one, I want that its width should be the 150 pixel first. And once it's 150 pixel, then we need to transform, rotate it by a 45 degree. All right. And then we also need to do a translate. So we will translate it 35 pixel and minus 35 pixel. All right. And now let's see does it taking a rotation of 45 degree or not. So if I click on the cross, you can see that one line of a cross and now we need to do the same thing for the after. So I am going to copy this again, complete, and I will change this to after. And this is already 150 pixels. So we don't need to make anything on the width and we only need to rotate it to a minus 45 degree. And let's make this to plus 35 and let's save it. So now if I save it, you can see that we have a proper cause. So if I click on it, we get a proper hamburger icon. And when we click again on it, it changes to a cross icon. So that's perfect. Now the next thing we need to do is for the left arrow and the right arrow. So the concept will be very similar. Let's copy this hole again. And let's change this to L arrow and the cross, we will change this to L arrow, L arrow. All right. And then in order to create the arrow, we want all the three bars. So for the middle bar, first, I'm going to add the width that it should have a width of 150 pixel. And for the before and after I want the width should be 75 pixel. So I'm going to give a width here and I'm going to add a width here as well of 75 pixel. All right. And if I save it, then let's see what actually happens. So, okay. It is forming an arrow, but it's not exactly what we want. So we need to make more changes to our CSS. All right. So we don't want any translate on the X axis for the middle bar. And for the before we have a 75, we need to rotate the before with minus 45 and the after with the plus 45. So what we are going to do, yeah, we will be changing this translate properties. So I'm going to have this translate as 10 pixel. This will become 22 pixel. All right. Oh, I did a mistake here. That's why I'm thinking what is actually happening. All right. And now we just need to change this and this will be same 10 pixel and this will become 22. All right, and let me save it. So now if I save it, you can see that we actually get the left arrow. So let me click on back. So now we get the hamburger icon again. And when we click on the left arrow, it turns into a left arrow. Let's do it for the right arrow. I'm going to copy this again and I'm going to paste this here. I will change this to R and I will change all these to R arrow. All right, for the R arrow, if I click here, it's still changing to the right arrow. So let's make those changes here. So for the R arrow, what changes we need to have? We need to have a transform. This should be plus and this should be minus 45 degree. So if I save it, all right. So we are getting a little bit of right arrow, but let's make this translate properties change. So this will become a 40 pixel. This will also become 40 pixel. Y will become 75 minus and I'm going to give this plus 75. Now if I save it, then I actually get a proper right arrow. So if I click on it, then you will get a right arrow. If I click on the left arrow, it's going to become a left arrow. And if I click on the cross icon, it's going to turn into the cross icon. So I hope you learned something on this video. And if you like this video, a thumbs up is appreciated. I'm going to add the link of the code in the description. So again, you can download it for the reference and you can play around it and use it in your projects. Also make sure you don't forget to subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. Also, you can connect with me via Facebook or Instagram. I will add the links in the description below and thank you. Thanks for watching.